It's January and this month has been full of no sugar challenges. Maybe you've already jumped on one or maybe you have heard that sugar is a poison and you should avoid it at all costs. Either way, in this video you'll learn why you don't need to go to the extremes and quit sugar altogether and exactly how to beat those sugar cravings. I'm Lara, psychologist and food freedom coach and I can help you create a healthy and happy relationship with food without guilt or emotional eating. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell to be notified every single time I post a new video. Side note here, if you are feeling overwhelmed and out of control around sugar, then sign up to my free Food Freedom Masterclass. You will learn how to feel in control again and say goodbye to those cravings. The details are below. There was a time in my life when I felt totally addicted to food, especially sugar. So if you're feeling addictive right now, then I know exactly how it feels. And honestly, your feelings are so valid. My clients inside Health Mindset Matters have also struggled with similar feelings. And inside the program, I help my clients really identify where that feeling is coming from and how they can stop those sugar cravings. We've seen so many incredible transformations with people completely changing their relationship with food for the better. Now, before we dive in, I have a question for you. Have you ever felt out of control or addicted to sugar? Let me know in the comments below. So first of all, I really want to explore this idea of sugar being addictive. Is that really the case? In short, the answer to that is it's not addictive. But before I explain why it's not addictive, I want to explain why we got that idea in the first place. In 2007, there was a study that gave rats the option of saccharin solution, i.e. a sugar solution, or cocaine, and the findings showed that rats chose the sugar solution 94% of the time. Now, the research has suggested that the rats preferred that sweet taste over the cocaine, and so people have taken that to mean that sugar is more addictive than cocaine. But actually, what it really tells us is that rats prefer the taste of sugar rather than the taste of cocaine. And if anyone's tried cocaine, then you'll know that it tastes disgusting. So there's no surprise there. In a further and similar study, the rats were actually starved for 36 hours before they were given access to the sugar. And then they binged on it, which actually proves my point a bit later on. So keep listening. Now the question also is, what is an actual addiction? If you go onto the UK's National Health Service website, this is how they describe addiction. And I'm reading this here word for word. Addiction is defined as not having control over doing, taking, or using something to the point where it could be harmful to you. The strain of managing an addiction can seriously damage your work, life, and relationships. In the case of substance misuse, for example, drugs and alcohol, an addiction can have serious psychological and physical effects. Now, if you look at that description of an addiction, can you really use that to describe your relationship with sugar? Yes, you might feel out of control, and I'll explain why that is in a minute, but is your relationship with sugar harmful? I would hazard a guess that it's not damaging your work life or relationships. Well, certainly not in the way that the writers of the page intended. Now, a further line of argument that's used to say, yes, sugar is addictive, is the idea that when you eat sugar, it lights up the same areas of the brain as when you take drugs. Now, the problem with that line of argument is that lots of things light up the same area, like if you stroke a puppy, or if you listen to music, or you listen to something funny, or you eat any food that you like, and also being in love. Now, we're not claiming that those things are poisonous and addictive, are we? So we can't really use that line of argument with sugar either. Okay, so you might be thinking, right, I get it. Not necessarily addictive in the way that the UK's National Health Service says, but I feel addicted to it. Why? When people describe feeling addicted to sugar, they describe these very intense feelings, a sense of feeling out of control around that food, and maybe sometimes overeating and binging. So this takes me to my second point. What feels like addiction is probably more to do with restriction. When you restrict food, your body does its absolute best to get you to eat more food. I went through the science behind why in this video here, 
So take a look at it and it's in the links below. But to summarize, your body does a number of things. It increases your hunger hormones to get you to eat more food. It decreases your fullness hormones to get you to keep on eating. Your brain notices more food around you, especially those that are high in fat and sugar. And it actually prepares to store more fat. And that's as a protective mechanism in case that there's another famine in the future. And when I mean famine, I'm really saying diet. All of those things create that wild, out of control feeling around sugar. It feels like the chocolate and the sweets are speaking to you. Eat me, eat me. This feels like an addiction. I get it because I've been there. When I was restricting my food excessively, I was also binging excessively. It got to the stage where every bout of restriction resulted in a bout of binging. And that wasn't because I was addicted, it was because my body was trying to tell me to eat more food rather than restrict. There's also research that shows that women who restrict are 12 times as likely to binge. So again, that can make you feel addicted to food. So now that you know that sugar isn't actually addictive, even though it feels like it is, I want to give you three reasons why quitting sugar for good and completely is not necessarily the right way to go. Reason number one is that sugar isn't the only thing that impacts your health. Health is so multifaceted. Yes, the food we eat and the movement that we engage in can impact our health. But so does our sleep, our access to good health care, our access to good nutritious food, whether you spend time in nature and how much stress you have in your life. So really when you look at it in its fullness, sugar will make up a tiny, tiny percentage of its impact on your health. And yes, I do fully agree that sugar isn't the most nutrient dense thing that you can eat. And yes, it has less nutrients than spinach or broccoli. I'm not disputing that. But what I am disputing is the full frontal attack on sugar when sugar makes up such a tiny percentage of its impact on your health. And when I went on some wellness diet, I was told that things like bananas, grapes, red apples were too sugary and should be completely removed from my diet. Maybe I don't need to tell you this, but seriously, all fruits can be enjoyed as part of a balanced diet. Reason number two is that demonizing sugar actually makes you want it more. I mean, I kind of covered this already, but full on restriction of anything is gonna make you want it more, but also psychologically. Tell someone that they can't have something then that's the one thing that they're really going to want. And there's also this view that is just about your willpower. If you only had enough willpower, you could cut it all out of your diet. That's just not true, because as we've seen, willpower cannot overcome the biological urges. And number three is that there's absolutely nothing wrong with enjoying some food that has sugar in it every now and then, even every day. Remember that the best thing you can do is eat a variety of foods. And my best recommendation is think about what you can add to your diet rather than what you can take away. You're way, way better off thinking about adding more fruits and vegetables to your diet or ensuring that you get between seven and eight hours sleep every night rather than stressing about how many grams of sugar there is in that chocolate bar. In fact, Research tells us that the stress of worrying about certain foods is way worse for your health than eating the food in the first place. So let me check in with you here. Does any of this surprise you? Does it go counter to things that you've heard before? If so, let me know in the comments below. And finally, I wanna leave you with three things you can do to beat your sugar cravings. Number one is to stop restricting. I've said this before, but once you cut out sugar, it makes you want to eat more sugar. Also, you'll get this frenzied, out of control feeling about it. And yes, you might successfully give up sugar for a month or two months, but what we find are two things. Sometimes it's called the last supper effect, where you binge before that period of restriction, or you go a bit crazy as soon as you're able to eat that sugar again. When you stop restricting sugar, it no longer becomes that quote unquote naughty thing. It just becomes another thing in the cupboard. It's taken off a pedestal. The excitement around sugar goes. And if you know that you've got access to chocolate or sweets or whatever it is, ice cream in your cupboard or freezer, anytime you want, you know what? The, the appeal goes away 
My second tip for beating sugar cravings is actually to get a very good night's sleep. If you're not regularly clocking in between seven to eight hours sleep, then you're probably not getting enough sleep. If you're consistently tired during the day, you feel like you're yawning, you need a cup of coffee to get you started in the day, the chances are you need to give yourself the opportunity to sleep more. So research has actually shown that people who don't sleep enough, that is less than seven hours of sleep every single night, are people who crave higher calorie and more sugary foods and more caffeine as well. So honestly, getting more sleep might be all you need to do to reduce those sugar cravings. Tip number three is to find different ways to deal with your emotions. You might call yourself an emotional eater. You might be reaching for a bar of chocolate every time you feel stressed or bored or tired. You may be emotional eating for a host of different reasons. And often it means that there's an unmet need. Now, I did a whole video on emotional eating. It's just here, so you can take a look at it there. But a key thing, if you feel like you're an emotional eater, is explore whether you've got any unmet needs. So getting your basic needs met is really important. So getting enough rest at night, hugs, expressing your emotions, not bottling things up, being heard and understood, finding different wa ways to cope with your emotions. If you routinely find yourself getting really bored and distracting yourself from the stress of your day's work by eating food in front of the telly, then that might be a sign that you need to work on coping with your emotions that doesn't involve food. Well, I hope you found those tips useful. As always, I've added some resources in the links below, and I have three great book recommendations. One is Good Food, Bad Food, and one is The Gluten Lie. So both of those go into detail about food restriction and the concept of sugar and sugar addiction. And the other book to recommend is a book called Why We Sleep. Now, honestly, this is a life-changing book. If you want to understand the impact that lack of sleep has on you, then this is the book to read and including those cravings for sugar. And if you want to understand more about beating cravings, then hop on to my free Food Freedom Masterclass all the details are below, including the link to register. Check out these videos next for more health and mindset tips. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and please do share it with your friends. Bye for now.